All right, we are recording. I did not see the light come on. So welcome to episode 33 on the Red Bra Project YouTube channel. I'm Renee here, and my co-host Shauna is not able to make it with us today, but we are so excited to come to you with our guest. So our latest crush, Jody. Jody's here with us from Florida, and so we both have our, our cup of coffee going this morning. Cheers, yes. Jody. Cheers. So great to see you and meet you. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity, and, and I just love what you guys are doing. It's so awesome. Oh, thank you so, so much. Really so awesome. we came across your feed and um, just kind of did a little more research and learned about you here and there, but I don't want to spoil it all. Um, you are doing some incredible things out there, and I think that so many of our viewers are going to be able to relate to you. So um, before we get into the good stuff, how about just a quick introduction? I kind of blew, blew the cover already, said you're from Florida, but um, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm a mom of two boys. Um, my boys are ages 21 and 14 now. Um, I, like you said, I live in Florida. I'm a nature lover. Um, I have two dogs. I have one wiener dog and a, like a mix mutt. And I love writing and I'm an author and a self-care coach for busy moms. I work exclusively with them to help them feel less stressed and more happy and more, more fulfilled in their life. All of those words just make you feel like, yes, that's exactly what we all need. Tell yeah. us the secret. But, um, you know, I know there's, we get a lot of our guests will give us little nuggets of kind of what helps them and what works for them and stuff. But I guess, you know, it seems like it's a little bit different for every person. But um, how did you, so you, you're a best-selling author. How long ago did you write your book and how long has it been out? What is that book about? So my most recent, I wrote two. Actually, I've written six but I only six. have published two. <laughs> yeah, six I've written, and, and the other four are sitting in my laptop because <laughs> it just didn't feel right to publish them. It just wasn't. I just write sometimes just to write, mm -hmm. um, but I did publish two. The first one was called Let Love In 101, A Practical Guide to Love and Happiness, and that was more just focused, like very general and directed mostly towards women, and then this last one that I published um, is called Mommy Reboot, A Busy Mom's Guide to Self-Care, and it's so crazy because I didn't grow up like as a writer. I didn't grow up with like any kind of writing background. In fact, I used to hate writing and I used to say that in college. I'm like, I hate, hate, hate writing. And what I realized was that I didn't really hate writing. I just didn't like writing about the things that I didn't like writing about. <laughs> so um, the last book that I wrote, I actually wrote it in four weeks. Um, and yep, it became an Amazon bestseller. And it's just directed towards self-care and busy moms because we are just so bombarded with, well, women, we ha are just juggling so many different things. And so it's basically just like the how-to guide, a very practical, quick, you know, it's not like these woo-woo principles. It's like very practical because I'm just the practical kind of girl. So that's exactly how I wrote it. First of all, I love the title of the book. <laughs> love it. Thank um, you. Um, that is your handle on Instagram as well, which, you know, kind of grabs you in and kind of makes you curious. And then you just kind of start going through and you can instantly feel just the genuine, authentic kind of vibe you have going on. And just, you know, um, I think that you're right, especially as women, we give, give, give. And it's really hard to put ourselves first sometimes. But I think, um, you know, you do a really good job of just even admitting yourself that you went through a hard time at one point where mm -hmm. you, you realize, look, something's got to change. And isn't that kind of where this all stemmed from, right? Totally, totally. So the premise behind Mommy Reboot is basically, I, I kind of equate it to like, you know how when you have a ton of different windows open on your computer and it's just really slow and it's just like, and then you're like, screw it, I'm just going to do control, delete, never mind, like crash it. Yes. And then when you bring it back up and you reboot it, it's so much faster. And that's what self-care is. And I got to that place where I was back in 2010. My boys were ages 5 and 12 at the time. And I was a single mom at the time, although I was dating my now husband who I've been with for 11 years. But we were just dating. So it was just me, you know, and I was just running myself ragged of devoting every ounce of love and attention and just physical activity towards them that I just completely forgot about myself. And this one particular night I was just 
doing the dishes and after dinner one night and I listened to how I was talking to the kids and it was kind of ugly. Like I just, it was not me. I was very much of like a positive, upbeat, like strong person. And so I could just hear, I'm like, oh my gosh, what was that? Like, who am I becoming? Where who the heck did that? that come from? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I did not like it. And so it kind of forced me to look at my life and say like, okay, I am definitely like, I'm, I, I really feel looking back now, I feel like I was like this close on verge of a breakdown because I was just so depleted and so just not aware of my own needs at all. And so I didn't know it then, but what I was doing with the very first thing that I started doing was just taking care of myself. So instead of running home and jumping into dinner and doing homework and cleaning up the house and making sure that they're in the shower, I would just say, okay, boys, go watch TV. I'll be right back. And I'd go in my bedroom and retreat for like 15, 20 minutes. And I would just like decompress from the day. And I just started to learn how to take care of myself because I knew that I needed something. So I decided to kind of give myself more moments just to be with myself and just to do more things that I love. Like I bought myself a bike because I remembered as a kid, I loved to go bike riding. And so I started just to do more and more and more of those things. And my life completely changed. Like I was so surprised by the outcome of it. And, and it felt like it was slow. But in hindsight, it was really big. It was really happening fast. So much to where people were like, that's why I wrote the book because people were like, what are you doing? Like, what is going on? You are so much more zen. You are so much more chill. I had stopped smoking. I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. I wasn't eating. I was skipping meals. I was like crashing on my bed at night at like 10 o'clock with my makeup still caked on my face. You know, I'd wake up and do it all over again and everything just completely changed. And I ended up getting out of corporate really quick um, and starting my coaching business and starting to write books and everything just really changed so quickly. And it's all because of, I chose to put myself first. And that's, that was probably the biggest shift that I had was realizing, oh, I need to put myself first and actually not my kids, not even my boyfriend, not even the people around me. I need to come first. And when I did that, and, and it felt so weird because as a society, that's not how we're programmed. You know, we're programmed to fulfill everybody else's needs and be there for everybody. And, you know, religions and societies teach us that. And I've realized it's just bull. It's just bull because we can't, we can't serve from an empty vessel. You know, like Eleanor Brown said, we can't, we can't give what we don't have. We, if we're not feeling whole and we're not feeling connected to ourselves, what do we have to give to our kids and our family and the people that we love around us? It's these like little fragmented pieces of ourselves. So it was a game changer, but that's kind of where I started. And that was back in 2010. And I've just been gradually digging my heels even more deep, deep, deep into self-care and, and what that means, because it's not about spa days and it's not about nail appointments and all the things, you know, that kind of were taught. It, it can be a regular part of your regular busy day. Yeah, no, I okay, love that. So, so many things I'm like, da -da -da -da, coming to my mind. Um, oh, yeah. Phenomenal story, though. I mean, that is such a wonderful share. And I think, you know, like we said, there's so many people. I mean, you kind of, I feel like it's a society thing where you can wear a badge of busy now. And so you're, yes. constantly, on yes. this, you're constantly go, go, go. And when you do get home, you want to launch into making dinner and doing homework and doing the chores that have to be done at the end of the day to maybe create more time later. But then that more time later never really comes. You just end up filling it with whatever yeah. else you can fill it with. Um, so to put on the brakes and take like 15 minutes, you know, and, and like you said, that was just 15 to 20 minutes. And did you notice a change immediately? Oh my gosh, huge. And that's what kept me going actually was because I, I could feel it within myself. You know, I, I had all the same, ex, you know, the circumstances. I still had to redirect the boys and I had to still help them with their homework and still do dinner. But the way that I was showing up to those activities, oh my gosh, I was so much more present. And I like felt like I wanted to really be there with them instead of just kind of operating like a robot, like, okay, got to do dinner and got to do, you know, just being there, you know, but not really being there. And what was the real kicker was that um, it was about a week into it. And my youngest, my kindergartner, I picked him up from school one day and I was just like, Hey, how was school? And he was like, it was okay, but I think I really just need a little bit of quiet time. And I was like, ah, oh. and in that moment, I realized it wasn't even about me anymore. 
It was about as moms and, you know, as caregivers, we are the models. We're modeling for them. And, and I, that really clicked with me is that, okay, this feels good and this is great for me, but also I'm, I'm teaching them through my actions of how to deal with stress and how to cope with the regular everyday life stuff that comes up and it's not all rainbows and butterflies. It's like, I wish I could put my kids into a bubble, but they're going to be stressful. They're going to have bad days. They're going to have careers and they're going to be, you know, pushing themselves, but I don't want them to be these depleted humans, you know, no matter how old they are. And so for me, it's, that's always in the back of my mind is like, the minute that I start to feel selfish, the, that's the minute for me where I'm like, it's not just about me. I, I'm showing these kids through my own actions that this is what a healthy coping strategy is, how to deal with life. And it's not always pleasing everybody else and constantly being on the go. It's about taking breaks and breathing and putting the oxygen mass on, our, on yourself. For sure. Yeah. And what an incredible coping mechanism to teach, not just your children, but also the people around you. And you know, I don't feel like this is something that comes so easily to many people. They, it's kind of a learned behavior. And you realize that when you're at the brink of, oh my gosh, I'm not enjoying anything anymore. Everything feels hard. And I'm literally not breathing throughout the day. This has got to stop because life is meant to be enjoyed, you know, no matter how many things we have going on. And um, learning that as a coping mechanism is huge because one thing could derail your whole day if you let it, you know? So it's kind of that mind over matter. Totally. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, and you're so much more effective too. When you take a minute to, that's what I realized is that I was so much more efficient and I was more productive. And so looking back at the last span of the nine years, I've accomplished so much, even during those walks on the beach, even taking minutes, you know, to sit by the pool in the middle of the day for 15 minutes, just to get my vitamin D. Those have been investments of my time. They don't actually take away from anything. They're actually helping to recharge and reboot my battery so that I can have the stamina to deal with all of these deadlines that I have and to deal with, you know, the craziness of being a mom and, and a mompreneur and a, and a work at home mom and, you know, a speaker and a coach and a writer and all those things. It's actually helped me to be able to do more in a funny kind of way. So, yeah. yeah. So interesting. And I mean, I think you're definitely a credible source being that you have this, 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 and all of this going on. And you're like, no, just, just really decompress for 15 minutes and you're going to be a lot more productive. Um, how do yes. you, yes. you struggle kind of with, like you said, sometimes feeling for a second selfish or that you shouldn't do that? How did you keep reminding yourself just, no, this is going to be better, not just for me, but for everybody? Um, so it, it took a lot and it still takes a lot. And, and I've realized that guilt, whether it's mom guilt or just that guilt of like, oh, I should be doing this one thing or I should be doing this other thing. I call it kind of that pull, that pull of like when I'm working, I feel a pull to be with my kids. When I'm with my kids, I feel kind of a pull to, you know, be at work or to send that email or to do this thing. Um, it's never going to go away. I think that that was a really big shift in my mind is just embracing the guilt instead of wishing it wasn't there or waiting for it to not be there, waiting for me to feel good about, you know, doing the, going to a lunch with a girlfriend or, you know, leaving my kids with a sitter or whatever the case was, the guilt is always going to be there. But the cool thing is, and the kind of sideways thing is, is that you can't really bring me a cup of guilt. It doesn't really exist. It it exists only in the mind, which is great because then we have control of it. And once I realized that, I'm like, there's nothing really outside of me that's controlling this guilt. I'm letting it control my life and run my life. And then guess what? I'm becoming resentful. So guilt is kind of funny because if I do these things because I feel guilt, guilty about not doing something with my kids or whatever, then I might become resentful. And then that doesn't help anybody. So I've just learned to kind of acknowledge the guilt and just to say, okay, I see you. I see you, I hear you, I know what this is about, and then kind of like kick it out of the driver's seat. Like just say, no, I am not going to allow you to run my life. And, and sometimes I've had to picture this like ugly guilt green monster, like I picture with like gross hair and like gross skin and like just so it's visual for me and then I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> so yeah, just, just being aware of guilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I loved what you shared too, just about how you deal with fear. I mean, you called it your friend. Yes. Yeah. Fear is just one of those things that's always going to be there. It's just, it's just going to be there. And that's another one of the game changers is like, I, I, especially when I was jumping out of corporate into this new life called entrepreneurship, which by the way, I was not like, I was always like supervisor or a manager and I had those types of skills, but running a company and running a business was not like in my wheelhouse. And I'm still learning after nine years, you know, it's just a constant, always kind of figuring out the next step. And early on, and one, one of the things that I realized was like, okay, I, I'm going to leave corporate, but I want to wait until I'm like, not so scared. And then it's like, oh, wait, I'm always going to have fear. You know, it's just, I've learned how to make, I have to make friends with it. And I still continue to make friends with it because it's always going to be there. If I'm stretching and evolving and pushing myself it's, and, you know, trying to live up to my own potential, it's always going to be there. So just become buds with it and BFFs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that because it's kind of like one of those things that if it's not there, you have to stop and question yourself. Well, am I too comfortable or am I happy kind of being right here if I don't have that? Exactly. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I can't stand seeing those quotes that say like, be fearless. I'm like, oh, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. Cause there's just no such thing. There's just no such thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's, I think there's definitely, you know, you can be limitless, but you're always going to take fear alongside of you. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. It and being like, all right, it's going to be you and me. I'm going to win. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Let's do this together. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So gosh, through everything, I feel like we could just go on for forever. There's so much here just between I all know. the wonderful um, tips and just motivation and inspiration you give women who are struggling with putting themselves first and kind of finding that reset button to, I mean, like you said, going from corporate to the entrepreneur life to running your own business, you know, it's two completely different things. And of course, a mom and a wife and, you know, friend and everything on top of it. Um, what are a few tips that you can share that maybe people can start implementing, not like spa or nail day or, you know, a $110 facial, but what are some things that somebody can implement now into their day? Um, the first thing I would say is start right where you are. So if you are broke and you have no money and you only have five minutes because you've got four babies running around and you have infants and your husband travels a lot or whatever the circumstances that you're dealing with right now, know that there are ways to get around it and you just have to be willing to start where you are. Um, one of my favorite hacks, I call it, is transitional times. So in our lives, whether you're a man, woman, mom, dad, whatever, we have these transitional times. And here's what it looks like is in the morning, you know, we have our routine. We get up, we get breakfast. If you have kids and you get the kids ready, you get them out the door, maybe go to school or you do those things or maybe, you know, you come home and you put the baby down for a nap and then, you know, then you have your afternoon. Maybe it's that you work or maybe it's that you come home and write content or you have business meetings or you go somewhere and then you're done with kind of the brunt of the day in the afternoon. And then, then you go into your evening routine. Maybe you pick up the kids from school or maybe you do homework and start dinner and then do get ready for bed and then you're off to bed. So in between each of those times, there's a transitional time. So I kind of say like anytime you're taking one hat off and you're putting on another hat, like for me, my morning routine, I, you know, I make sure my kid's up, he's 14 now, so I don't have to like get him ready, but I make sure he's moving and he's, he's, you know, on time, time to get out the door and stuff like that. So like once he's out the door, I take off my mom hat and then I put on my work hat. And in between that time, you know, I've been going for a couple hours, you know, and I've been, I've been kind of redirecting. And so I take just five minutes to myself before, after take, or after taking off my mom hat and before putting on my work hat, I take just five minutes and those are transitional times. So anytime that you're switching from one thing to the next, give yourself sort of just a little bit of a buffer just to breathe. You know, if, if your baby's been up all morning and you know, the baby woke up at six o'clock in the morning, by the time 9, 30, 10 o'clock comes, the baby might be going for a nap. And the first thing what a mom tends to do is like, oh, I've got to hurry up and clean the house before the baby wakes up, or I've got to do the dishwasher or fold this laundry. And it's kind of just like this perpetual, like charge, go through the day and like, 
nonstop. And that's what depletes us. Whereas if you say, okay, the baby's down for a nap, I'm going to take 15 minutes to myself and I'm just going to stare at the ceiling or I'm going to read my book or I'm just going to sit outside or I'm going to meditate or I'm going to go for, you know, sit on the porch step or listen to some music or chat with the girlfriend. Do something for yourself. And those really add up. Those little transitional times are huge for us because everyone experiences transitional times. Everyone has at least five to 10 to 15 minutes somewhere where they can put it in their day. I call it kind of sprinkling it, you know, sprinkle self-care into your day because those little tiny moments really, really add up. That is so good. I love it because then it doesn't feel as overwhelming and, you know, as, as much as we kind of make that, you know, vision of the guilt monster there, it's okay if you can do little bits, you don't have to take it on, you know, in one big heap sometimes. I love that. And then, you know, it gives you a yeah. years too, you know, you go from mom to to boss, to, you know, taxi driver at the end of the day, to chef. Right. Dinner. So that is so cool. I love it. And then it sounds like you and that's what's the depleting. shoes that you want, right? You sound like what? You, you fill that time with whatever you want to fill it with. Yeah. You basically just ask yourself, what do I need right now? You know, maybe like, let's just take the mom who's putting the child down for a nap. If you, Maybe you're exhausted and you just need to set the alarm and just, you know, close your eyes for 15 minutes. Ask yourself what you need, because I think that's the biggest problem that we have is we're, especially us women, we are so nurturing and we're always thinking about what everybody else means, you know, our significant others and our husbands and our kids and our clients. And it's like, what does everybody else mean? But we forget to ask ourselves that. So just that simple question and saying, what do I need right now? Maybe I just need to sit on the couch and just watch some mindless TV for 15 minutes because FYI, that is not going to make or break anything. It's not going to break your business. It's not going to break your marriage. It's not going to break your relationship with your kids. It's not going to do anything but be beneficial. It's going to be something that fills you up and make you feel more whole and connected to yourself and it's going to add value. Anything that you do for yourself, it's an investment of your time. So there's this idea that what we do takes away from our kids or it takes away from our spouses or it takes away from, you know, X, Y, and Z. And it doesn't, it adds value. It adds value because it makes us better people. When we're coming from a place of feeling whole and connected to ourselves, we have tons more to give. We're a better mom. We're a better spouse. We're a better everything, a better human, just with more patience and loving and kindness. So um, just remember that, that there's always, Time. And here's the other little thing I would tell somebody too, if they're looking for little hacks is like, don't wait to have time to show up for yourself. There's always going to be laundry. There's always going to be dishes. There's always going to be cranky kids or mouths to feed or a client who needs something or an email or a text from a friend. There is always going to be something, which is why you have to make the time, even if it's just five minutes and you have to be the owner. You know, that's kind of you got to kind of own that and just say, I, I can't, I, I can't afford to, to wait around for the laundry to be done or to this to be perfect because it's never going to happen. And that's just one way to keep avoiding yourself. Yes. Such that's great tips. I love it. I'm so excited to get your book. Um, yes. And so, Thank you. I, yeah, I'm going to do kind of a left turn because you mentioned something that I wanted to just ask a little bit more about. So you, at one point you thought that you hated writing. You couldn't stand it. It just turns out that you had to write about what you wanted to write about. So when did you finally kind of give in to trying that? Or did you, was it just enough of a kind of tug at your heart to write that you just launched into it? It was, it was, it, it was gradual, like in the sense of, I felt this tug at my heart and I've always kind of had this little idea in the back of my head um, to write a book. So I lost my dad to suicide at 15. And that just changed my whole world. And so I always knew I was going to write about something. I didn't know if it was going to be about that or I didn't, I didn't know if it was going to be, you know, about his suicide or everything that I kind of went through after that. I didn't really know what it looked like, but I just kind of honored that pull. And the beginning, I don't even remember, but it was, it was so opposite of where I actually ended up going. But I just, I have this kind of, this motto in my head is start ugly. And that just kind of 
that just kind of was in the back of my mind. Like I just have to write and I don't care if I don't publish this. I just have to write and get this stuff out. And once I started writing, I started to notice that my voice was starting to evolve my, you know, my writer's voice and I was becoming more authentic. And then I was writing about those really hard things. And then it was becoming really cathartic and the ball just kind of started rolling. And then my, my husband, God love him. He was the one who really pushed me. I showed him first and he's like, Jody, this is really good. You have to share this. And I'm like, no, uh -uh, I'm good. And he's like, okay, just start showing your friends and just, you know, you're really close knit friends. Just show them and see what they say. And I'm like, okay. So I did. And, and they were just like, oh my God, you wrote this? Like, this doesn't even sound like you because I was in such a zone of just kind of bleh, you know, and, and really just getting vulnerable with my writing. I, I am a very good writer in the sense that I just let go of what I feel like I should be talking about or, you know, if I'm going to offend this person or that person, I just kind of let it go. And then once I let friends read it, then it kind of, my circle got bigger and I'd let other people and then I kept hearing the same feedback. And so I'm like, okay. I was kind of like, you know, the mom dragging the kid. I felt like the universe was kind of like dragging me. And I was just like, no, I don't want to write. But I had to, and it was in me. And I'm really glad I honored it because it's been so helpful. So helpful as a, just a tool for people to read and, and listen to. I have an audio book too. Oh, so awesome. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it, and it's again, one of those little things that when you have a tug at your heart about something and you don't quite understand it, you know, um, you know, that whole start ugly, I think that can be applied to not just writing a book, but to starting a, you know, passion project or a business or a side something, or, you know, totally. maybe training for something athletic or, you know, cooking, teaching yourself something new. But I mean, it, again, it takes so much pressure off to think start ugly because, it's not going to be perfect. We're all going to mess up, especially at the beginning. So that is a great, great exactly example, an analogy. I love it. Yeah, it's it's not going to be. I heard it from um, I heard it on a, a speaker. Oh, his name was Chris Kremitz, Kremitzos. I heard it, and I was I, I fell in love with it. I'm just like, it makes so much sense. It just you know you heard you hear about taking imperfect action, but like for some reason, Star Ugly just really resonated with me. Yeah. And it kind of makes you laugh too. Yeah. So it helps you not take things so seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's um, okay that this thing is ugly. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, on the Red Bra Project, we always ask what um, our guest Red Bra moment is. And that, I mean, you can have one every single day. Sometimes it's really pivotal for somebody. Sometimes it's a small step, um, but a huge impact in their world. So if you had to choose one thing, kind of like a really empowering yeah, I kind of rose above it and I did it anyhow. Do you have something that you would point to that exact red bra moment? I would say it had to be the moment that in my mind, I went from this idea that I have to put my kids first to putting myself first. I would say that was really hard because everything in my DNA was telling me that, no, that's not what you're supposed to do. Or everything... I don't even say, I, I want to say actually it was probably opposite. Everything in my DNA was saying, yes, I need to put myself first, but everything, all the shoulds and what society, you know, how I was programmed was saying, no, that's not how it is. So for me to really own it, I had to really step up and say, no, this is, this is the way to be a good mom is by putting myself first. I would say that was probably the most um, powerful red bra moment for myself is, is, is that is just saying it's okay that I'm putting myself per first and it's not selfish. Oh, which is such a huge thing too. And that does take a lot of strength and just coming back at it and pushing through that uncomfortableness because it doesn't feel normal. You're right. For mm. most of us. So. Yeah. Um, right. Um, yeah. So tell our, tell our audience and everyone who tunes in where they can find you, where they can purchase your incredible book. I know I'm eager to get my hands on it. You said Amazon, but is there anywhere else? Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's on iTunes. Um, it for the audio book. And and if you're not a mom, number one, it's okay. You can actually still read the book, and there's still some really good nuggets because at the end of the day, all of us women are caregivers in some capacity. So you can replace it with dogs. You know, wherever I say kids, you can replace it with dogs or people around you. So um, most certainly be open to checking it out. And yeah, so it's on Amazon. Um, you can find me all over social media called Mommy Reboot. Um, and also I have a private Facebook group if you are a mom 
and you do want to be kind of linked into this community, um, you can just search Mommy Reboot and we're getting up there. It's like, I think it's over like 600 or something moms and moms all around the world. So like in India and Canada, and it's really, really awesome to have moms from all over the globe to be in there. And we're all just kind of learning this thing called self-care. And I pop in there and I do videos and content and all kinds of fun stuff. So yeah, social media, it's all Mommy Reboot. And my website's amommyreboot.com. Perfect. Okay, cool. We will definitely make sure to link all of that on our Instagram page um, and on our blog post as well. That Facebook group is amazing because you get to be with so many moms throughout the whole globe. So I mean, mm. social media, thank you. <laughs> it's a great way of connecting. Right? Everybody. It is. Yes, yes, for sure. So we close out all of our- Thank you enough. Oh, for sure. And thank you. I mean, it has been fantastic. And I feel like there's going to be um, a follow up with Jody two and possibly three in the future. So, uh, you know, Shauna always says, yeah, we're get together with all of our red bra guests and have a big party one day. And that's definitely on the I love it. <laughs> so we close out it. every show with a quote for our guests. And um, I actually I wanted to share one of your quotes because I thought it was fantastic. And more people need to hear it. So always remember that setting boundaries are a sign of self-respect and a healthy relationship. And that mm. is you, Jody. So um, I love it. Thank yeah, you. You are so welcome. Um, I think it's something that, like you said, whether you are a mom, as women, we are all caregivers and somehow or running a business or running our lives and helping others. And it is such a good thing to, to um, be aware of. So thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate it. You are welcome. And to all of our listeners and viewers out there, if you liked what you heard, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share this story with somebody who may need to hear it. Remember, one story can impact one life and make such a positive change. So thank you guys all for being here. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon.